Honourable Deputy Leader, Angela Rayner. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I share the Deputy Prime Minister's remarks regarding the Sikh community and, most importantly, about the incident in Poland last night? I know the whole House stands united in our support for the Ukrainian people and sends condolences for the tragic loss of life. And Britain has an unshakable commitment to NATO and our allies, including yeah. Poland. The Government has rightly requested we establish the facts and avoid unhelpful speculation, so I understand that the Deputy Prime Minister might not be able to go further today. But does he agree that last night's events aside, the fact that Russia is launching missile attacks on Ukrainian civilian infrastructure whilst world leaders meet shows the utter contempt that Putin has for international order? Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Can I thank uh, the Right Honourable Lady? I entirely agree with what she said. Uh, President Putin started this war, uh, and whatever uh, the determination made in relation to the events yesterday, they result, whether directly or indirectly, from the unlawful aggression perpetrated by the Russian government. And that's why the Prime Minister is out at the G20, uh, rallying support, making sure we wean ourselves off energy uh, dependence on Russia, making sure we uh, make sure we've got the energy supply from other parts of the world. And, and I agree with what she said 100%. Angela Ray. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's right that we condemn Putin in his strongest terms. But the G20 is also an opportunity to work together to tackle the economic challenges we all face. Yet as our international allies race to crack down on multinationals using tax havens to stash profits abroad, this government is dragging its feet to protect their profits. We have a budget tomorrow, Mr Speaker, where it's briefed that tough choices will be impacting on families across Britain. Does he accept that every pound hidden in tax havens is a pound loss from the pockets of working families? Well, can I thank the Honourable Lady? I mean, I, look, we want people to come to this country to create the jobs uh, and to generate the tax revenue. Uh, whether it's non-DOM status, which was stricter under this government given the changes we made than under the last Labour government. Uh, whether it's the Prime Minister's approach to big tech companies, uh, where he's led the charge uh, with the G presidency in making sure there's an international approach uh, and delivering uh, global minimum corporate tax rules. We have lowered the tax gap, the difference between the tax owed and the tax uh, raised, to uh, the lowest level, certainly lower than under the last Labour government, and will continue to do so. I know its non-dom status hasn't been abolished, though, Mr. Speaker, and the Conservatives, the Conservatives would have us all believe that the economic problems are out of their hands. When the truth is, Mr. Speaker, it's working people paying the price for their choices. They've chosen to protect corporate profits and not household incomes. There are 38 countries in the OECD two-year growth league table. Where does the UK rank in that table? Deputy Prime Minister. Thank her. She, she'll know that on the latest data, unemployment remains at a 50 year low. Yeah. Well, she's saying, the, the, the Shadow Chancellor is saying it's gone up. It's half the level left by the last Labour government. And when it comes to GDP. And what, and when it comes to GDP, she'll know that the IMF has said that we will have the strongest growth in the G7. Angela Rayner. Mr Speaker, I think the economic situation families face speaks for itself. Yeah. But I'll answer the question for the Deputy Prime Minister. The answer is 38 out of 38 on growth. If there was a World Cup for growth, we wouldn't even qualify. Working people are paying the price for 12 years of Tory failure. The wrong choices by the wrong people. Now, after days of dodging and denial, this morning the Deputy Prime Minister finally acknowledged formal complaints about his misconduct. But his letter contains no hint of admission or apology. This is anti-bullying. This this is anti-bullying week. Will he apologise? Deputy Prime Minister. Can I thank the Right Honourable Lady? Look, in terms of the economic challenges which are global, caused by COVID and the war in Ukraine, we've got a plan to grip inflation, balance the books and drive economic growth. If we listen to the Honourable Lady, debt would go up, unemployment would go up and working Britons would pay the price. She asked... She asked... She asked about 
uh, the complaints. I received notification this morning. I immediately asked the Prime Minister to set up an independent uh, inquiry into them. I am confident I behave professionally throughout, but of course I will engage thoroughly and look forward, Mr Speaker, may I say, look forward to transparently addressing any claims that have been made. So, Mr Speaker, let me get this straight. He has had to demand an investigation into himself because the Prime Minister is too weak to get a grip. A Prime Minister in office less than a month with a disgraced Cabinet Minister resigned with his good wishes, the Home Secretary who breached the Ministerial Code and risked national security still clings on, and now the Prime Minister defends his deputy whose behaviour has been described as abrasive, controlling and demeaning. With junior staff, Mr Speaker, too scared to even enter his office. And that's without mentioning the flying tomatoes. The Deputy Prime Minister knows his behaviour is unacceptable. So what's he still doing here? Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm here and happy to address any specific point she wishes to make. Uh, the, the, well, that never happened, uh, she says, from a sedentary position, and I uh, will thoroughly rebut and refute any of the claims that have been made. She hasn't, in fact, she hasn't, in fact, put a specific point to me. If she wishes to do so, and this is her opportunity, I'd be very glad to address it. Angela Rayner. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Angela Rayner. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Maybe he just doesn't think there's a problem, or maybe he's suggesting that civil servants are liars. Now he's reportedly banned from meeting junior staff without supervision. While we await an inquiry the Prime Minister hasn't even instigated from a watchdog he hasn't even appointed. In the Prime Minister's letter, he did not say how and when this will be investigated or by who. No ethics. No integrity and no mandate, and still no ethics adviser. So when will they appoint an independent ethics adviser and drain the swamp? Mr Speaker, the recruitment of the new ethics adviser is already underway and taking, and taking place at pace. But may I say, Mr Speaker, there is a reason that she has come to the dispatch box with her usual mix of bluster and mudslinging is because they don't have a plan. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we're helping people into work. She's in hock to the unions. We're protecting our borders. She voted against every single measure to control illegal immigration for this country. We're delivering cleaner growth and energy security. She wants to send billions in reparation payments abroad. The British people want a government that can deal with the real challenges, and they're not up to it.